My guest today is Sumit Patel. He's a uh, mathematics statistics student at the University of Ottawa. In his last term, he will soon graduate. He also works currently at the uh, CBSA, the Border Services Agency. And Smith is a uh, former student of uh, the Intro to Quantitative Consulting course. And I thought we could invite him to tell us a little bit about his experience in the course um, and uh, what he might have learned through the course and uh, what he thinks you should do uh, to approach this course and get the most out of it. How are you doing, Smith? I'm good today. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. So. Uh, why don't you tell us what uh, what interested you in taking the course in the first place? Um, I think for me, I hadn't really taken any courses that were uh, considered a topics course in the past. So this was kind of my first course of uh, diving into a course that wasn't more like intro to probability or intro to stats or just a normal normal course that a math and uh, stat student would take. So the course really interested me and um, I hadn't really learned or known anything about consulting previously going into the course. So I figured it was something I would try and yeah. See, that also that always surprises me. You know, the first student who said that they didn't know about consulting or didn't think that consulting was even an option. I think Drew from Odd said something of a similar nature. It's like, whoa, okay, well, now we know that this exists. Uh, obviously, on the part of consulting um, consultants, uh, we're obviously not doing a bang-up job of making this knowledge available to um, to students. Um, so you took the course last year. Your version of the course was slightly different. I'm just going to give a... Well, actually, how about I ask you to give us a quick rundown of what your version of the course was like? For sure. So um, the way the course started out was uh, we had a few lectures where uh, Patrick would talk to us about um, ethics and consulting as a whole and just giving us a, a, a basic overview of how you approach um, a project and how you approach consulting. Um, and then from there we split up into teams where we were assigned two projects uh, where we were either the primary on a project or the secondary. Um, and we kind of worked together on, on both projects and had meetings every week and um, throughout the semester I guess we would just try to tackle what we could and um, in the end we had to kind of report um, everything that we did and um, yeah. I should mention so in your version of the course the projects that you were being given were projects that were actually from uh, real clients in the public service yeah. or uh, I think we only had public service clients that year yes but in other uh, other versions of the or other iterations of the course we've also had uh, clients in the private sector. Uh, you talk about being a primary and a secondary. Another thing we should mention is that the teams were not the same from one project to the next. So you ended up working with, in your case, I think you worked with four different individuals or five yes. different individuals at any yeah. rate on the, on the two teams. Um, how did you like the teamwork aspect of the... Um, I thought the teamwork aspect was really interesting because... Um, just like any other group projects, there would always have to be a leader within the group and kind of a lot of collaboration. Um, I think a lot of us that were taking the course had, it, had also not known about consulting before or had worked in a project that was so hands-on. So it really required a lot of collaboration, a lot of working together, um, a lot of meeting up outside of class and kind of discussing things um, to kind of get a better idea of how we want to move forward with the project, as well as um, just overall how we want to work and tackle the project. We, uh, I seem to recall as well, like it took a little bit of time for us to get access to data, at least for your specific project. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of the um, of the uh, flight predictor project, uh, even for the actually even for the CE reg project, it took. Or even yeah. when we got the data, the data was uh, horrible, which yeah. you know, is usually par for the course. That's what you should expect. Uh, but I do remember it took a while before we got going on the flight predict uh, uh, flight prediction project. Um, what do you do when you know the one thing you really need to get going isn't available to you? Because you guys weren't just sitting on your bums mm -hmm. and twirling your thumbs. You were doing something else as well. So how does that work compared to say a, a regular course where you're given weekly or you know biweekly assignments or you have to you know, tests and what have you. What did, what did you do as a team to, well, 
fill the time before the data became available? Um, so I think for us, like um, the, the key thing is not to kind of waste time and be productive with the time that you have. Um, so what we try to do was kind of uh, avoid the problem of not having the data and get the data from elsewhere so that we could at least create a prototype of what we wanted to do. Um, so for us, in our case, we referenced the website that had similar flight data uh, to what we would be getting so that we could at least come up with some sort of prototype that would be similar to what we would use when we got the actual data. Um, and that was a big learning experience for us as well as we kind of got an idea of not just to sit around as we're, as we're used to doing, but kind of be productive, be proactive with uh, the situation that we're given and um, yeah, work with what we're, work with what they're given at the time. Yeah. So I find this idea of the prototype that you've mentioned, that's a, that's a great approach to consulting. Like you will not always have all the tools at your disposal, all the data at your disposal, all the information at your disposal, but what you want is to get the process going so you can actually have a bunch of these modules in place that run, even if the modules do nothing, they run in succession and eventually you'll be able to fill them in with, well, you know, presumably, hopefully, some advanced quantitative uh, math and stats stuff. But also, I mean, if you look back to the CE Reg project, sometimes the level of sophistication that is required is actually fairly low. It might just be a problem of collecting the data and realizing that the data doesn't merge well because it comes from all these different um, sources. And uh, you have to find a way, of course, to, well, to report on that. So uh, that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind. So how would you say this compares to, um, well, to a regular course that you've taken at Ottawa U before? Um, so for me, from my experience, I think that this course was a lot more hands-on and it kind of required you to uh, kind of had the ability to want to learn new things and kind of grasp um, more real world application, I would say. Um, so looking at other courses, they were very like strict on read these chapters and kind of these are the lectures, this is the material, you're going to be tested on this material. Whereas this course was a little more hands on, it was a little more, um, it was a little more involved, I would say. So you don't really know like this is what you're doing, this is exactly how you do it. It's kind of like, do the research, um, talk with the client, talk with the rest of your group, have meetings, um, and kind of put everything together. Um, so it, it, it required a lot of more self-learning and um, the ability to work with what you're given and to take that and go with that and just meet with your group and do all the things you have to do, I guess. Now you've, I mean, you've taken other courses with me you know that I'm not the, um, I don't have, <laughs> I'm a big believer in self-learning, right? I mean, the, the best way we learn things is to basically try it out on your own. And I, I'm not saying that I'm going to throw you in the water without a life jacket the first time you're going to learn how to swim. I mean, I am going to be there, but I will want to do something like the equivalent of saying, well, try it. What's the worst that can happen? And so uh, if anything out of this course, if you, what you and your classmates got was that hey we can actually try things out we do not not we don't need to be told you know the first thing we'll do is this the second thing we'll do is this the third thing we'll do is this it isn't just because that's my personality it's also the reality of a situation if you plan things from start to finish before you have the data before you know what the data will say you end up in a situation where you might have this fantastic plan and you can never get past step one because step one is never you know, going to be complete according to, to what you planned. And so yeah. the idea that you go out, you try things on your own, even when they do not work, you learn something from having tried something. I know uh, recently in a, in a reading course you took with me, you set up a, a deep learning uh, uh, infrastructure. And I know we basically, like we were getting to the point where tearing our hair out, trying to get that darn thing to install properly on your Mac. At some point, I mean, you got you got your knowledge of the of the infrastructure, oh, overshot mine, and then you figured out a way to do it on your own. But it did take what three weeks to get it three weeks, uh, yeah. up and running. And so, if you're expecting it to work, you know, in the first hour and a half, you're trying it because you saw instructions online, and the person who posted the instructions is expecting it to work in an hour and a half. Well, if you stopped after an hour and a half because it didn't work, you would never have gotten to the point where now you can actually run the deep learning networks and tasks on, on this image classification 
Mm -hmm. And I also think it, it's kind of, it gives like more of a real world example of working on a project as well. Um, because the courses that we normally take is more uh, very theoretical type stuff, whereas this is more application and actually having to go and find the information, which is, which is really different, I would say, as well. And that is what you're going to encounter, like even if you're not going to be doing consulting. Like now you work at the CBSA as well and you obviously don't have a, somebody like a prof telling you what each of the things you're supposed to, that you're supposed to do. So this, this idea of uh, delimiting the problem, recognizing the problem, making it your own in a sense so that you can go about trying to find tools and methods and data that will help you answer questions. At least from my perspective, that is one of the things I want, I want people to learn in the course. Obviously, it's a short course, it's like yeah. three months. Um, even if everything worked exactly as it's supposed to work, there's not that much time to, to, uh, to take a project from point A to point Z. I'd like to say we're gonna take the project from point A to point G, or perhaps from point mm -hmm. A to point H is roughly speaking where we, we left things. Um, how much time a week did you spend on this course? Um, I would say probably around 10 to 10, 10 to 12 hours around approximately that much, 10 to 15. Um, it definitely required a lot of work outside the class itself. And um, we did have meetings weekly with Patrick as well as our group. Um, so there was there was definitely a lot of time outside of the physical three hours of in-class lectures that we had. Uh, and you were taking like what, four to five? Four courses that, uh, for that semester, yeah. Uh, so roughly speaking, you know, between 20 and 25% of your time at the very least. Now, I like to yeah. say that I don't care about your other courses. I only care about the courses you're taking with me. I'm rec I, I recognize the fact that, you know, you have other classes and you have jobs and families and lives outside of school and it's important to maintain a good work-life balance. But I do believe that it's better for your long-term uh, employment prospects to focus more of your time on courses like these and the techniques of data analysis course, which are project-based. Which is not to say that you shouldn't respect the other courses. I mean, obviously you need to get the technical know-how to be able to do consulting or to solve problems. But speaking of the technical know-how, so you took this course when you were a third year student in particular, right. before you took machine learning, um, mm -hmm. did you feel that you had a, the, um, a complete technical background to approach, but at least the two problems that you were given? Um, I wouldn't say so. I think that um, if we had known a little bit more about machine learning or a little bit more about using R in general, it would have been a bit nicer as I kind of took the course earlier on. Um, and I hadn't really taken many art courses leading up to this course. Um, definitely there was like a steeper learning curve for me, but um, again, it, it required me to get more involved um, and kind of learn, learn more outside the classroom and it just gave me more opportunity to expand the knowledge that I didn't have. So, yeah. I like to think, I mean, one of the things I like to tell students and, you know, employers when I, whenever I try to, to match them is, if they haven't seen it in school yet, they have the background and the basis to be able to learn it quickly, right? And this is one of the selling points of being a mathematician or a statistician or somebody who's comfortable with quantitative uh, matters is you cannot see everything. It's impossible. Like, I mean, I could list, you know, 20 topics that are pretty important topics in the, in the real world out there that as a math student, you will not even have heard of, right? There's just so many things to study. I know when I was an undergrad, I hadn't taken a single probability of statistics course by the time I graduated. There were just too many math courses to take, right? So it's impossible for everybody to have a complete picture. I mean, 500 years ago, some of the smart mathematicians knew everything about math, but that's that's not the reality. Of it. Nobody's a Gauss here, but on top of that, even if we were Gausses, like Gauss himself could not know everything there is to know. Uh, if your goal is to turn your quantitative training into employment of a quantitative nature, you need to be able to sort of learn things on the fly. And given that you will not be taught all the things you need 
for consulting and other jobs. You're hoping that you can turn that, uh, take your skill set, learning about theoretical matters, and learn about these quantitative matters. Is there anything else you want to share with the uh, students? Um, I think the final thing would be that I hadn't really thought about consulting as a possible career or something that I would do or pursue after university. But um, after I took the course, it kind of opened my eyes as well as like a few other peers in the class on how consulting could be a possible path for us. And um, two of uh, myself and two others in the class actually um, are looking into building a consulting firm of our own upon taking the class. Um, so it definitely opened our eyes to a possible career or something that we can do after university that was more not formulated as like a nine to five or something that we were kind of restricted to. Um, so that was really nice from taking the course, I would say. Um, that's good, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the expression uh, lifting yourself up by your bootstraps because I think it's, well, it's misleading and it sweeps a lot of stuff under the carpet. But if you can help yourself in any way, do stuff on your own rather than rely on, you know, employment that may or may not be coming, why not try to, you know, uh, build something in parallel to your uh, search for employment? So... Uh, congratulations to you, and now I'll name them Vatia and Dhruv for, uh, um, uh, you know, joining forces, or at least thinking about joining forces. I wish you uh, good luck with your reading course and good luck with your uh, other employment uh, options. And uh, again, thanks for taking the time to uh, share your experience with the students. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.